would only work at the uh, the L1 Lagrange point between the Earth and the Moon, or could it work also at the Lagrange point um, on the far side? It, it could. You do something different there. Um, it's... Honestly, Michael, we haven't really looked at that problem because we're not, okay. we're less, we're, we're more interested in like the cislunar space and actually providing a commercial development for the moon. Absolutely, you can do it at, at L2. Um, it makes we more sense though to do it from the, the one between. The right. The, the L2 point, what you'd really get there is probably a, uh, a research station what you get out of the L1 point is a research station, a medical station, a fuel depot, a hotel. I hate that idea, but uh, you know that the, is that kind of thing. Like you just get more applications out of a Lagrange point state, uh, uh, L1 station than you do an L2 station. Now I understand that right now you have a Kickstarter to try to raise funding towards this <laughs> yeah, project. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's funny. Our Kickstarter is really kind of funny because. Uh, you know, you guys set a minimum, right? And so our minimum is pretty low. It's eight. It's eight thousand uh, dollars. And what does that get you? We're looking to uh, we're looking to do some robotic experiments this summer. We want to recreate what we did five years ago because I have a for the most part I have a new team. I need to transition the knowledge that we used to have to the new guys. Uh, and I think we can do that fairly quickly and relatively inexpensively. And we're really talking about hardware costs. Um, new robots from new balloons, new uh, you know new ribbon, that kind of thing. Um, uh, but let's face it, eight thousand dollars is not going to build an elevator on the moon. So so we know that some of the Kickstarters have had really big numbers if they've got a community of support. So we're kind of hoping our community gets involved because our by our math. Um, it's going to take about two years and about $3 million to get a complete feasibility study. And so on the one side, we're all about hardware and committing research and getting you know, solid results out of a, you know, a very tangible, discrete product. But on the other side, we have a much bigger goal, and this is where we want to go. So, so somewhere between $8,000 and $3 million would be great. <laughs> But at least that much would be able to, to get things started. Yeah, yeah. So for people that are donating towards it, are you going to have one uh, big package uh, as a reward if they donate X amount of dollars, or are you going to have a tiered program? Like if they donate $5 or 10 or 25 right. what can they expect? We have a lot of tiers, and that's by design. Um, we're going to have people that are you know, fans of the space elevator, we're going to have fans of people that are interested in the lunar elevator because it's closer. And then, because our balloons have a lot of capability, uh, observation, communications, mesh networking, cell phone systems out in sub-Saharan Africa, we can do a lot with our, with our balloons. So we're really trying to appeal to three different groups. Uh, so we've got, uh, we've got relatively inexpensive rewards to get people involved with what we're doing. And then we've got rewards into the five and $10,000 range. And some of them are space elevator specific, some of them are balloon specific, and some of them are uh, uh, just, just to get people on board. You know, a lot of people don't even know we're back in business. So that's, that honestly, the main reason we're doing this Kickstarter event is to let people know that we're back and live and doing this again, that, that we didn't give up, that we didn't quit, we, 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 we stumbled, but you got to get up. So that's, that's honestly the main reason. Um, we actually plan to do many Kickstarter campaigns because, uh, uh, Michael, I got to tell you the honest truth. Um, uh, there were dark days. There were really bad days for me. And if it weren't for the fans that stepped up and wrote e emails about, hey, you know, their... Uh, they're high school kids, and they think this is the best thing ever. There's a, there's a kid who wrote me a message who says, the Space Elevator is the biggest thing ever. And he put it in capitals, he put, and he put an exclamation points on it. And it was, even though I'd been working on it for years, it was the first time I'd ever really looked at it from the perspective of a 17-year-old kid. And it's the biggest thing ever. And you know, what's funny is the Earth elevator is big and the lunar elevator is even bigger in a way, right? So um, the fans, they've provided uh, 
really important breakthroughs. They've actually helped us in our designs a couple times. They've actually helped and checked our math. We've made some mistakes. Our, our fans have, have fixed. Um, they've bought our art. They've, they've been there. They've written haikus. We had, a, we had, we had fans just, uh, this is what I think, right? They've written songs. If you type up uh, space elevator music, there's like a sub, sub, sub genre of music. Our fans have kept us going during the dark days. And, and so we've got a whole range of, uh, uh, of rewards at, at every level. Um, uh, I did some math on Kickstarter. 38% of the money that you raise, 38% of the total number of contributors it, contribute $15 or less. So everybody looks at Kickstarter as a cash cow because they're trying to write checks, right? But the reality is Kickstarter is more important developing a community. Um, we, we crashed in 2007. There really, social media had not even really gotten its start. I was annoyed because my guys were on MySpace all the time. So, um, so building the community is, is really kind of key. Uh, we'd like to raise the money. Don't we? Don't want to discount that. But uh, so we've got you know two and three dollar. Or sorry, three dollar rewards all the way up to ten thousand dollar rewards, and all of them are awesome. And we want people to contribute. Well, it sounds like you guys have a lot of great support. And now yeah. it's just the mission of letting them know that yeah. we're back and we're yeah. ready to rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, we're we're probably going to do a Kickstarter campaign like literally every month for forever um, because uh, one, well, what we're doing is we're like each thing is a discrete project. Yes, we've got a company to run, but each thing is a discrete project and we've got an art product coming, a project coming, and we've got a, uh, uh, a movie project and we've got this this. Story you know, robots and balloons project. And we're just going to, because again, it's more about the fan support and the community and the connections. Um, you know, uh, we, get, we get PhDs come in and they want to help and they want to help check our math. And we get school teachers that want to inspire their students. And so uh, we don't really have a mechanism to connect with our community right now. And so Kickstarter has a lot of, uh, a lot of advantages for us.